Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking two tropical waves in the Atlantic, one of them, Tropical Disturbance 1 designated by the National Hurricane Center for possible development. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Monday, June 24th, 2024. We have five tropical waves that we are monitoring, three that were in the Caribbean, one that's moved into the Pacific Basin at this point after crossing Central America. Then we have Disturbance 1 in black, and we have another strong tropical wave, which is looking rather impressive right now, which just came off the coast of Africa in purple. Here's the vorticity and spin in the atmosphere associated with those tropical waves. You can see Disturbance 1 just north of Central uh, South America, east of Trinidad and Tobago, is looking rather healthy. It's very circular in nature, but does not have a closed low yet. As we look at the satellite image, it's still an open wave moving through the Atlantic as it's getting ready to enter the Caribbean. And it's got a small chance for development over the next seven days. Over the next two days, it's got a 0% chance. But over the next seven days, National Hurricane Center says either in the Western Caribbean or again in the southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico, like where Alberto and Invest 93L were, it's got a 20% chance for development in the next seven days. So let's look at that on the models. On the, we're going to use the GFS model. The black hexagon is Disturbance 1. Purple hexagon is our tropical wave off the coast of Africa. And our three other tropical waves are highlighted in green. Now, if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see it's in very warm waters right now, Disturbance 1. The Caribbean's very warm, so that's going to maintain the fuel for this storm. And the Gulf of Mexico has cooled off a little bit since we had so many invests move through the area, churning up the waters. But as you can see with the actual temperatures, which are around 28, 29 degrees Celsius, that's equivalent to 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's well enough, more than warm enough, to develop something tropical in nature. We just need 80 degrees Fahrenheit for that. So with the fuel uh, from the, uh, the oceans, you can see the amount of moisture that they have working with them is very deep. And we have upper level ridges overhead both of those uh, tropical waves, which is going to enhance possible tropical development, but be hindered as it gets into the Caribbean. As you see, right now they have favorable low wind shear environments, both tropical waves, but the Caribbean has a higher wind shear environment that is in yellow and orange at the moment. So let's move this forward to two days from now. On Wednesday, June 26th, we have Disturbance 1 moving into the Caribbean. It's just south of Hispaniola and north of Colombia at this point. And our purple tropical wave is still in the main development region. You can see that we have our moisture still in place thanks to the favorable environment that we have currently. But as it gets into the wind shear environment, you see a little bit of pocket of dry air just to the west of our disturbance one and a lot of dry air just to the north and west of our other tropical wave. But that one shouldn't encounter too much uh, wind shear as it crosses the main development region. But the Caribbean, as you can see, has a high wind shear environment, which is hampering the development of that tropical wave over the next two days. But once it gets past there and into the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, you'll see it's gonna become much more favorable, the environment. So here we are on day five, Saturday, June 29th, and Disturbance 1 at this point is going to be just in, to the east of uh, Belize, maybe even over Belize in the Yucatan Peninsula at this point as it's interacting with the Central American Gyra once more, just like Alberto and 93L. Our purple tropical wave is being suppressed by our Bermuda Azores High, so it's in the deep south of the intertropical convergence zone just north of the equator so being that close the Coriolis effect will not allow something to really get a hold and spin at that time um, 
it needs to be a little bit further north typically not to say nothing has developed that far south but usually it's a little bit further north where we want tropical development and we have another strong wave coming off the coast of africa in pink on saturday as you can see here so here's the moisture content still working it's still strong with all of our waves and you can see we have the upper level ridge with our black hexagon that's going to allow for that proper exhaust in the upper levels of the atmosphere, expanding in the upper levels, converging in the lower levels, developing that low pressure system and light wind shear environment, as you can see here. And then by the time we get to day six on Sunday, June 30th, last day of June, can't believe that's already here. We see it has crossed the Yucatan Peninsula, our black hexagon for disturbance one in the Bay of Campeche. Depending on how much land interaction it's going to have will determine how strong that low pressure system could be. If it stays over water longer, obviously it's a better chance of development. If it stays closer to the coast like 93L did, less of a chance of development. And then on day seven, first day of July, we have three of those entities that we're still monitoring two tropical waves in purple and pink one entering the caribbean one in the main development region looking rather strong and disturbance one hugging the coastline on this model so we don't see it develop into a tropical uh, depression or storm but like i said if it stays a little bit further to the north over open waters it's got a better chance we see the pretty much the same thing on the European model, as you can see here, tracking all those tropical waves. Disturbance 1 hugs the coast too much so it doesn't develop on this model run. And then we have our two other tropical waves moving through the main development region, which that last one in pink uh, on the GFS model looking more impressive than the purple one. If you look on the ensemble models, you can see that the GFS is supporting more of Disturbance 1 in black in our first tropical wave in purple versus the European model, which is more favorable to our pink tropical wave, the one that's going to come off the coast of Africa later this week. So we'll keep an eye on all three as they move across the Atlantic and see if any of them develop. So we have Disturbance 1 in front with our tropical wave behind it with another one behind that as well. If any of these next systems do develop, the next name on the list would be Barrel. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you like what we're doing here and want to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.